and be willing to accept death cheerfully, not the emotions. And I'm putting this out there because we're in a time in which we're going to see death like we've never seen before. 10,000 going to die on this side, 1,000 going to die on that side. But it's, it may not come near the, the elect if it's not your time. Death is important when it escalates the work because a testator is actually not recognized by men until after death. So death can be a victory. We have to get out of this fear of death that we've been programmed in this society to understand. There's a reason they put horror movies out there and things that scare you eye and people dying and see it, looking at dead bodies and people shooting. They want you to fear this. They want you to fear the physical. But really, what's in you is more powerful. When you cut this loose and get the new one, you're unstoppable. That's what they want you to fear. Death is part of this work. It is. Christ is our forerunner. Finish reading. St. Matthew, chapter 16, verse 24. Then said Yeshia unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross, and follow me. So if we are to follow Christ, we must deny our own selves. There's things we want in this life. We just want. We want to be able to have our nice families, to raise everyone and raise the children and do picnics and you know go on vacations and we want to be able to do normal things but is but is is this the time for that we got to be able to, to deny those things we can only dream now we can only dream of the kingdom that the that christ had put before us to understand that this world is nothing when i read about the kingdom of heaven and started understanding about the kingdom of heaven I realized myself how much I was cheated in this world. This world is nothing. It's nothing. So it was nothing to go out in the cold. It was nothing to go out in, in the dead of winter, summer, regardless, whatever. It was nothing. To travel all around and, and deny ourselves, to give out the word, it was nothing. It meant nothing. Because I'm like, if we do this with the understanding the Most High give us, maybe we can help speed this thing up. Maybe if we can go and wake up one of 144,000. We come closer to that time and we're here. We want out. That's the whole deal. We want out of this wicked cesspool. And the kingdom cometh not by observation. Teachers that have the understanding that can't even sleep without it coming to you. Scriptures popping all over the place, understanding coming. Things just come out of nowhere. The Most High didn't give you information to sit on it. He gave you the understanding to use it because our life is short. Our time is short. Our kingdom will be here in no time. Finish reading. St. Matthew chapter 16 verse 25. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. If you try to hold on to your life that you think is your life in this world, you're not, we're not going to get it. That's why you have to be in the mindset to say, what do I love in this earth more than the most high? What am I, what am I willing to give up? To stand before the Most High and get a crown and he look at me and he look at me or anyone else and say, you know what, son, job well done. Who's willing to give up everything? People talk about Christ. Christ is not going to church on Sunday. Christ is not just, yeah, brother, you my brother. I love you. You love me. That's not, no. It's being willing to make your life a sacrifice and, and to actually make a print in this world to show that you was of Christ. And not just a number. The information brothers and sisters are getting, the time is short. You need to go out. You need to spread it. You need to hit every area. You need to do whatever you need to do to bring numbers to the most high so you can get your crown. That's what time we're in. Read on. St. Matthew chapter 16 verse 25. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my name's sake shall find it. Why? Read. Verse 26. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Because what's the profit when you can get all the things in this world and your soul comes to nothing? You get some people that feel a certain type of way because their lifestyle is not a certain way. How can you gain the world and accept to receive the world of Christ? Especially those that are in the Christian church today. They think that their spirituality is wrapped up in their substance. 
that their blessings of their big TVs and big cars and nice shoes and three-piece suits and able to take your kids to college and whatever the case is, that's showing how spiritual you are. You know what? You have your kingdom. You have your kingdom. How can you get a kingdom from someone that was willing to give up everything, including their life, and take Satan's kingdom and everything he have to offer and think you're going to get Christ's kingdom too? Everything you have belongs to the Most High. Everything. Are you willing to become nothing? Are you willing to become homeless? Are you willing to become broken? The only thing you can depend on is the Father to know how real the Father is. Read. St. Matthew chapter 16 verse 26. For wit is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? That means there's a price for you. Like how much can Satan give you to buy you? Is there a price for your soul? They'll tell you in a church it is. They got a 200 line. They got a $100 line. They got a $1,000 line. The real spiritual people have put in $2,000, $3,000. There's a price for how spiritual you are. Read on. Verse 27. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And then he shall, re he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death. Like you don't, you don't even know what death is until Christ comes. This death is nothing. This death is nothing. There's a judgment when Christ comes where those that haven't, haven't did their work or brought souls to the Most High that have not repented that, that, that live their life with no repentance at all, no conscience. They're going to be tormented for a thousand years. Then, at the end of the thousand years, stand before the Father and be thrown in the lake of fire with Satan, their God, who tricked them into believing he was Jesus. Fairly I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. It's one thing I want to get in this same chapter about the sign. Let's start at 16 and 1. St. Matthew chapter 16 verse 1. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting desired, desired him that he would show him, them a sign from heaven. So the Pharisees and scribes came to Isaiah and say, listen, if you are what everyone claim you are, give me a sign. You know what? And on a low level, I've even heard stuff like that. Through, through this whole ministry. People are like, but where's the people that are being healed? Where are the people that are doing this? Where's the people that, you know, no, you know, where's the walking on water? Let me tell you, we have done more miracles strictly by teaching because by teaching, we have raised the dead, the volley of the dry bones. Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. We have, read, we have raised the dead by prophesying. But people seek a physical sign. They let you know how carnal they are. They really don't believe. They're looking for a reason not to believe. Read it again. St. Matthew chapter 16 verse 1. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came, and tempting desired him that he should show them a sign from heaven. Show us a sign. Read. Verse 2. He answered and said unto them, When it is evening, ye say, It will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowing. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the sign of the time of the times? You can prepare. You see in signs every day. Just look at outside. You can prepare for the weather, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. That means you see what you want to see. If you know it's going to rain and that's the forecast, you're walking down the street with an umbrella. It's cloudy, it's no rain, but yet you understood the forecast. You see the sun gonna come out, okay, let me put on some lighter clothes. You can prepare for physical things, but you can't discern the signs of the times and prepare based on spiritual things. That's our world we live in today. The signs of the times is before us. It's more signs that you can put your finger on. It's so much news, I'm tired of looking at news. Read on. Verse two. Excuse me, verse 4. 
a wicked and adulterous generation. And when it talks about adultery, it's not just talking about physical adultery. It's talking about spiritual adultery too. People that are attached to their gods. Read. St. Matthew chapter 16 verse 4. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Everyone is looking for a sign. On a lower level, people call and email. Well, well, how many months do you think before things go down? Or where are we in prophecy exactly? You know why? Because they're not discerning the most high. They're discerning their life and how long they can live their life with, with substance. And they're wondering how long do they really have to do something that the most high is showing them that they must do now. So they need confirmation. They need a sign. Some people say, well, I have to wait for more rumors to come. It says wars are rumors of wars. So we, we need one more rumor. As if the Most High only bring forth prophecy in the country you live in. There's wars going on in the earth that have nothing to do with America. People are looking for a sign. And what did the sign, what, let's get the sign Yeshia gave them. Read. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And there shall no sign be given unto it. You're not going to receive a sign. If you can't see that there's signs already, you're not going to get a sign. You're not going to get the sign you're looking for. That's what he's saying here. Because he's telling you you can't discern the signs of the times. Well, the signs are there. But you're not going to get the sign that will confirm your faith. There's certain things you have to see before you make a move. As if you're the most high. Before you do what you know you're supposed to do for the most high. You have to get a sign.